Okay, this is Bridge Designer 2016. The idea here is that we're designing a bridge to cross this river valley and do so at the least possible cost. There are lots of bridge design uh, game packages out there where your your truck uh, falls to the bottom and explodes in a big ball of, of flame. That's not what we're doing. Um, hopefully the goal here is to get you to think about um, structural design, bridge design, but, but more broadly about structural design and what holds up structures and the different stresses and forces that we think about when we design things like this. Um, another goal here is to get you to think about the economics. Economics is a huge, huge factor in engineering. If some of you decide to go on and actually pursue engineering as a career, you will find that the project costs, i.e. economics, is sometimes the most important factor in, in winning a job like this because you're bidding against competitors and uh, so economics is a, is a huge factor in, uh, in engineering. And so that's really hopefully our, our goals here. I will give you the, uh, these codes in class. Uh, generally speaking, you'll be doing a couple homework assignments with uh, very specific site conditions and you'll be using six character codes for those. And then we'll be entering the national contest and I'll, I'll give you that information in class or via email. This next window gives me several different um, design options. For example, as I lower my deck elevation, my bridge structure gets shorter. As it gets shorter, presumably uh, the bridge will get cheaper. However, on the flip side, now I have to move dirt on both sides of the bridge and that costs money. That's called excavation. So if you come down here to the bottom right, click on this down arrow, my excavation costs start to rise. Um, the deck costs go down, however. So that gives me one thing I can play with. I think it goes all the way down to the bottom zero, um, zero meters. Second thing, that the, uh, concerning the abutments. These are the abutments in, in bridge terminology. You have one on the left and one on the right. They hold back the dirt and they also serve as the foundation at both ends of the bridge to hold up the bridge. I can use standard abutments like this or I could use arch abutments which give me a little bit different bridge design and you can keep track of the costs down here on the bottom. I can use no pier or I can stick a pier in the middle of the bridge coming up from the bottom of the river and I can also make the pier different different lengths. As I go up the cost of the pier shown down here obviously rises but I'm going to need less steel as I connect the top of this concrete pier to my bridge structure whatever it ends up looking like I'm going to need less steel so I can I can play with that that's another trade-off. Um, I can select one cable anchorage right there or I can select two cable anchorages one at each end of the bridge. You can think of a cable anchorage as sort of a dead man anchor from which you can string cable up and over a steel. You know, you can build a little steel superstructure on each end. String cable up and over and then down to hold up your bridge. So there's that option as well. I can select medium strength concrete which is about 10 inches thick. That's what 0.23 meters is. It's heavy. Um, but it's cheap because it's just medium strength concrete. Or if I want to spend more money, I can go with a thinner, about six inches in thickness, high strength concrete. High strength concrete costs more, obviously, because it uses more, you know, a richer mix, more Portland cement, various additives and things, which raises the cost of it, but it's lighter. And okay, I can select no template at all or I can select how Pratt or Warren templates to make my design easier and I can do that below the deck as well. Personally I like 
the none option because I want to design my own. Enter your personal information over there and then be sure and read these notes before you move on. Okay, first thing, grab the joint tool up here and place the connections or the joints. Now you can center them right over the lower joints like I'm doing here or you could put them in the middle. You can put them lower, high, it's up to you. When you're done, you can click on this calculator and see and you can see what that cost. The connection costs are listed at the top, so you keep track of your costs that way. Next, grab what's called the uh, what it calls the member tool right there. And I'm going to select quenched and tempered steel and solid bar and about uh, 100 by 100. I have no idea if this will work or not for this bridge. Um, if you're going in a straight line, you can kind of take a shortcut like this. <clears throat> I made them solid. I could have chosen hollow tube. Generally speaking, solid material um, does better in tension. And all of these members along the bottom are going to be in tension with a truss that's built over the roadway like this. All of the members that go across the top will be in compression. And so I, I will want to use hollow tube for them. Um, this window gives a lot of real good detailed information. I don't want you to just skip over this. I want you to look at it because I will be asking you questions about this on your homework. So if I select, you know, this member right there, member seven, it's telling me what it's made out of. It's telling me what the yield stress is. You can think of that as the, as the, you know, as the yield point, the breaking point of the material, if you want to think of it that way. Gives me the modulus of elasticity, density, and it gives me a sectional right here. When a, when a material is called out as 100 by 100, it means it's 100 millimeters on a side. That's about four inches on a side. That'll give you a visual of roughly the size. Equally as important, it also gives you the unit cost and the total cost for that member. That member costs $1,884. This time, I'm going to go across the top of my truss. So I'm going to select a fairly large box shape, hollow box shape. 300 millimeters on a side. That's about 12 inches on a side. The 15 that's stuck on the end of that tells me the thickness of the material. 15 millimeters or about 5 eighths of an inch. I'm going to put that across the top. And a box shape, hollow tube in other words, does real well in compression. So generally speaking, the, all of these members across the top and some of the members in between are going to be in compression and you probably will want to use hollow tube for that. A hollow tube like that has a larger moment of inertia so it's lighter weight and stiffer so that's why it does well in compression. I'm going to select a little bit smaller member. I have no idea what this will even work. Click on member list. This gives me a detailed listing and you're going to end up using this when you go to test your bridge. Click on this calculator again. I've got kind of an expensive bridge here at 305,000. So this gives me a breakdown. Now click on this button right here and it will run a load test animation. Okay, so I got lucky. This particular design held up. The red means compression. The blue means tension. So my job at this point would be to optimize this bridge. It costs too much. Um, look at the ratios, for example, on this chart. 
the members that are under compression are going to have a ratio in this column. If I select member number 10, it's going to be in compression. That member is way oversized because the compression force that it actually experiences divided by its allowable strength is only 0.26. And so I could probably make that, that member cheaper by making it smaller or using a cheaper material. Remember, I used quenchin tempered steel on that. I might be able to use one of these lesser materials and have a cheaper bridge. So that's how you optimize your design. The members that are in tension are going to be in this column. So member number one, along the bottom, that's no surprise, it's in tension. I'm, I'm underloading that member. I only have a ratio of 0.16. And I could go up to one without the member failing. So this gives me a lot of latitude on this design to lower my cost, which is the objective. You want the truck to get across the bridge, but you want to have the lowest cost. So this bridge design needs to be optimized. It's too expensive. And if you submitted this bridge design as part of your bid package, your employer would not get the bridge contract and you would not be building the bridge because you would have a competitor doing the same thing for $250,000. And that's the goal here to meet the requirements that the client is asking for at the lowest possible cost. I promised you I was going to show you some cheap bridges if your goal is to just build the cheapest bridge possible. And I'm not going to trace all of the member information to the specific members on this drawing for you. You can figure it out. But right now I'm hovering over the joints, the connections on the bridge. And you guys are smart. You can figure it out. Here's another one that came in a little bit less. <clears throat> Hopefully, by showing you these, I'm, I'm showing you how to optimize a design. The things you can play with to lower the cost are the material types, obviously, the size, the cross-section, and the placement of these individual connections. Your connections do not have to be uh, centered. They don't have to be symmetrical from one end of the bridge to the other. And so by playing with those and moving them around, you can lower the cost.